Hello everyone and welcome back. For those of you who've been following my channel for a while, I know I promised you that I will get back to you with a new episode uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, but unfortunately, I was traveling, I came back uh, home and um, ended up with a whole bunch of work as well as just some personal stuff that I was dealing with. And so I'm sorry, but this is maybe a couple of weeks too late. I also remember that in the last episode, I was going to talk to you guys about bidirectional SPI using TinyGo. But what I realized, uh, which I should have realized, honestly, before the last episode, uh, was that uh, the TinyGo implementation uh, does not support the, um, the peripheral interface uh, for SPI. Uh, it only supports what is called the controller interface or the master interface. And uh, I did not realize this, and so I kind of made this commitment that I would send, give you guys a new episode that had uh, both uh, a bidirectional SPI interface uh, implementation, and I couldn't do that. Uh, I also tried to do the same thing using MicroPython, and so you know I was going to run the controller side with TinyGo and the um, peripheral side with MicroPython, and I realized the MicroPython implementation also does not have the peripheral interface or the peripheral commands, and so I decided it's not worth it to go that route, and instead I decided to go with something different. So in today's episode, we are going to talk about uh, the UART uh, or uh, the Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. This used to be in the past also called a USART for Universal Serial Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter. Um, as the name implies, it is a serial protocol, um, but uh, what is key here is that it's asynchronous, which means that it does not have a clock. Um, therefore, uh, most of the speeds that you get out of this are pretty slow. Um, you know, you typically will get speeds of about, the maximum is about 115,200 uh, bits per second, also called the baud rate. Um, and you probably have been familiar with baud rates, and I'll probably be dating myself when I say this, but back in the day when we used to have modems, modems used to have, you know, 14.4K baud or 28.8K baud. Uh, they were serial devices. The cool thing about uh, UARTs are because they are asynchronous and don't need a clock, um, there's two cool things that happen with them. The first is that you only need two lines uh, basically to transmit and receive. So you basically have one line that sends from, say, a controller to a terminal or something like that, and you have another line that comes back from that terminal back to the controller. And so that is kind of cool. So you only need two wires effectively. And the other cool thing that you have with uh, UART is uh, because they don't have a clock and, uh, you know, uh, they can actually transmit over really long distances. And so where you may get a few feet uh, out of a serial peripheral interface or a synchronous peripheral interface, you will actually get probably uh, hundreds of feet with a UART. Um, but the speeds are lower, and that's okay. And you will need to know the protocol in advance because you need to know what the baud rate is, which is the number of bits per second. You need to know what's called the parity bit, the number of stop bits, and the number of data bits. So we can set all this up in a terminal window. Um, the traditional one that I use is basically a 115,200 or a 115.2K baud um, transmission, eight data bits, um, no parity, and, no, and one stop bit. So that's what I'm going to use here. Um, so let's dive into our code. Um, in terms of connections, before I dive into the code, all I've done is um, I've taken the UART1 TX and RX pins on my Raspberry Pi Pico and ground, and I've hooked it up using the um, serial to USB converter that I referred to in one of my first episodes, I think. Um, and it's on my website um, where I show you how to set up or how to plug in a a serial to USB converter that I got from Adafruit um, into your uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. I'll put a link in the description below um, of the video. Uh, so feel free to go check out my blog uh, and take a look at the instructions there. Uh, the part number for the Adafruit um, USB or serial to USB converter is also in that link or in my on my blog. And so you should be able to go buy that uh, if you want to try out this uh, particular experiment. All right, so let's dive into the code because um, I don't want to waste more of your time just uh, sitting here uh, listening to me talk. All right, 
So here we go. Um, I've actually boosted the uh, font size quite a bit, uh, just because some people were saying that you know the font is a little too small. Um, this is also inside of Goland, and the cool thing is Goland actually the newer version that's going to come out in I think the end of this year probably, maybe it's early next quarter, as in October or November, um, has a completely new look and feel. And I was lucky enough to get like a beta or something of that. It's available on their website. I downloaded that. I converted to the new look and feel. And weirdly enough, that look and feel actually applied to my old installation of Golan. So anyways, you know, kind of a cool look and feel. You can see everything is sort of minimized, uh, nice little icons here, um, you know, uh, kind of VS Code-ish, I think. Um, you know, although I probably suspect they wouldn't be caught dead saying that. But anyways, we can say it. Um, all right, so here we go. Uh, let's dive into our code. So the first thing I've done um, is, you know, I have um, uh, three variables I've defined. Uh, first, a variable called uart, which uh, goes to a, uh, a constant called machine.uart1, which is basically, there are two uarts on the Raspberry Pi Pico, uart0 and uart1. I just am using uart1 here. Um, and then there's a tx pin and an rx pin. Uh, both of these are pins, obviously, and uh, the TinyGo implementation actually has um, actually has uh, built-in constants for the TX pin and the RX pin um, for uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, and the TX pin and RX pin, I will put a link to the pinout in my description, but, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, but th they are essentially um, towards the middle of the Pico on the left-hand side. Uh, that's the pins that we need to use. All right, so what is the program that I'm trying to do here today? I've got a very, very trivial program. And the program is it prompts you for entering your name. And as soon as you enter your name, it will essentially send back a hello and your name. Okay, very simple, you know, just to demonstrate how the UART works and how uh, you can communicate with um, a serial peripheral. So I've got a constant defined here. Uh, constant called prompt that basically is set to enter your name with a space and a colon or a colon and a space. Uh, as always, I've got my little configure function. You know, I love to write these little configure functions. And all it's doing is if you notice, it's calling a configure method on uh, the UART that we had defined above. And it's setting it uh, to a baud rate of 115,200 uh, with the TX pin set to the TX pin we had defined above and the RX pin set to the RX pin we had defined above. Super simple to configure, nothing major here, you know, the only big thing is get the baud rate right. Okay, so then let's kind of jump into our main uh, function here. So I've got a bit of a sleep here, this is not really needed. I got this because by the time I, you know, the, the only thing is to communicate now with the UART, you need some kind of a terminal program or a serial monitor. I use Minicom and by the time I load up Minicom, you know, it's a couple of seconds. Um, so I figured a five second timeout would actually be decent enough for me uh, to load up Minicom in time to actually show people the prompt and everything else. So that's what I've got going here, okay? Nothing nothing major. This is irrelevant really to um, the uh, the whole experiment here. I then just print something to the serial console, which I'm not going to show you because it's irrelevant. Again, a little debugging message. I call the configure function that configures the UART uh, to that baud rate with the transmit and receive pins that we had set up. Um, and then I enter sort of an infinite loop. And what I do in this loop, it's, it looks really complex, but it's not. Okay. But let's take a look at what I do. Uh, all right. So I basically um, uh, create a slice of bytes. Uh, initially with a capacity of one, and obviously because it's a slice, uh, it will expand as the number of, so it's basically creating a byte buffer of some kind. And then uh, to that buffer, I mean into the, I basically then write to the UART the prompt, which is, if you remember, the prompt is here. It basically says enter your name. So that's what you'll see on the terminal. And then, um, there seems to be a byte stuck in the receive buffer of the UART for some reason on startup. And so it was giving me like this weird stray character that just made it look bad. And so what I do is I essentially just read uh, the UART once. Um, and, and if there is a byte there, I discard it essentially. That's all I'm doing. But the way you read a UART is 
you know, this function here, the uart.read byte, and then there's another function called uart.read that basically returns a slice of bytes. But these functions will throw an error if there isn't anything waiting in the receive buffer. Now the uart, the way it functions, it's got a transmit and a receive buffer, and it basically sucks up all the data into those transmit and receive buffers, and then your program can query them. And as your program reads byte by byte from that buffer, the buffer is gradually emptied. So, as long as there's something waiting for me in the receive buffer, I want to read it. If there's nothing waiting, I don't want to read it. And in this case, I'm fairly confident that there's always something waiting. So I just do a, you know, I do a quick search. A buffered is a function in the TinyGo implementation that indicates how many bytes are available in the receive buffer. And so I just, you know, this is very self-explanatory. Um, I just check if there is anything in the buffer, and if that, if there is something, I'm going to get a value that's greater than zero. And if that's the case, I essentially just read this byte into a variable called discard, and I essentially just discard it, okay? Uh, that gets rid of that really ugly stray character, and that's fine, you know, whatever. Um, and then, like I say, for the real action here, right? So then I've got, I'm inside this infinite loop, and then I want to enter sort of another loop. And the other loop, uh, you know, is another infinite loop. Um, and I don't break out of it unless I receive a, a backslash n. So here's what's going on, Okay. So in the second loop, the inner loop, I'm essentially reading the UART. If there is any data to be read in the UART, which is done by this if UART.buffered greater than zero line, um, I essentially read that byte. So if you notice here, I read uh, this byte into a variable called in byte, and then um, I'm echoing that back to my serial terminal, all right? So that's what this uh, line does, the UART to write byte. So essentially, read a byte, echo it back to the sender, and then I enter into an if condition. And what I'm searching for is if I get a carriage return, basically an ASCII character 13, uh, then I want to assume that the input has ended and I can echo the hello. But if it's not, I basically just want to keep appending uh, this uh, byte that I received into a uh, slice of bytes, all right? Which is what I call data up here, if you notice. It's that, it's that slice that I made up there. So essentially what I'm doing is I keep reading byte by byte by byte, appending it to this uh, to this slice of bytes or a buffer essentially. And once I finish, once I receive a carriage return, I, I break out off the loop. So as long as I receive a byte that is not a carriage return, I essentially append and then I go back to the beginning of the for loop. The continue statement in Go basically goes back to the beginning of the for loop. So it just keeps trying to read the, the receive buffer over and over and over again. Um, and it will only read it if there is uh, nothing available. Now, if I get a carriage return, I assume that the input has ended, and I basically do a break. And what does a break do? It basically breaks me out of this inner for loop and takes me immediately to the outer for loop. And in the outer for loop, all I'm doing is I prepend hello to the received input, so let's say that I put my name in there, right? So I put in Charat, uh, which is my name, in there. And um, I basically, um, you know, and I hit carriage return. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically echo back hello Charat uh, to the output. And I do that with, you know, I create basically a string uh, by concatenating a whole bunch of things together. I then convert that string to a slice of byte uh, and I write it out to the buffer. And then the outer for loop goes back to printing out uh, the prompt here and waiting for input. So we just keep doing this over and over and over again. Um, all right, so that's the program, very simple. I'll put a link to my GitHub repo um, in the video uh, links below. Um, and let's uh, run this program and let's see what happens here. Um, I believe this program is already uh, on my. Uh, I believe this program is already loaded to the Pico, um, but um, you know, uh, yeah, I believe it's already loaded. Um, but just to be sure, let's just load it again because I suspect I might have, you know, loaded something else. Okay, so I've uh, put my Pico into uh, into the uh, disk mode. Uh, let's try to flash it with the program. Okay, that's done. 
And now uh, I'm basically going to go to uh, my Minicom, which you can see here in a terminal window. Um, and let's uh, load up Minicom. And you can see it's just sitting there uh, waiting. It's possible that uh, the program isn't running right now. Let's give it a few seconds and see what happens. Okay, so for whatever reason, Minicom isn't connecting. So let's try this. I tried resetting, we'll give it its usual five seconds. There we go, the prompt shows up. Enter your name, so I'm just gonna put my, you know, A name in there. I'm gonna say Joe. And as you notice, as I'm typing, it's echoing the characters back to me, uh, which is pretty cool. I hit carriage return, returns back, hello Joe, goes back to the beginning, prompts me for a name again. Um, let's put in someone else's name there, uh, put in my name there, and you know, this keeps happening over and over and over again. And that's about it. I mean, a very simple program uh, that illustrates to you how uh, we can use um, TinyGo and the UART uh, to talk to a serial device. All right, so I got nothing else here. Uh, what I will do is I will post um, the links in the video below. And uh, before we go, obviously, I just wanted to, you know, as I always do, let's talk about what I was going to do um, uh, in the next episode. And this time, I'm not going to commit to something, uh, but I'll probably do something next time around PWM, which is pulse width modulation, or the ADC, which is the analog to digital converter that's in the Pico. Um, but let's not commit to something right now, uh, but we'll figure out what, so it's kind of a surprise, I guess, for you guys, uh, but we will, um, uh, we will see where we get to. Um, also, I wanted to thank you guys. I've kind of gotten to 92 subscribers on my channel right now, which is really cool given that I don't advertise a lot or I don't advertise at all. And, you know, I'm not... Uh I'm not trying to make this go viral or anything. Uh, really appreciate all the support. Really appreciate the very supportive comments that I've gotten in the com in the comments below each video. Uh, makes me want to keep going on and on and on, uh, which I will. Um, you know, a few more videos on TinyGo. My latest obsession now is uh, learning how to program uh, FPGAs in Verilog, and so you know you can look for a few videos on Verilog as well coming up in the near future. So, um, hope you enjoyed this episode on the UART, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode, either talking about PWM or ADC, or who knows, I might actually post a Verilog video before I post a PWM or ADC video. Either way, uh, very glad to be talking to you guys, very glad to be showing you guys uh, what little I know about TinyGo and its implementation, and uh, as always, appreciate the subscribes, the comments, the support, um, and uh, look forward to talking to you guys in the next episode. Thanks a lot.